This podcast may contain views and opinions which are those of the hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any local agency, organization, union, employee, or company, including the podcast. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, We are back in action. Welcome to another week of Off the Clock Shop Talk. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. As always. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Always, I'm always going to throw that out there. We'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll do that a couple times throughout yeah, the show. We'll, we'll do it a couple times. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in every week. Like we always say, um, you know, uh, hopefully this week won't uh, disappoint. Won't disappoint. Um, we got a return guest. I'm excited to, uh, you know, introduce, for those of you who didn't see his other episode, but re- reintroduce Jake Bowman yep. from Medieval Times. He's a knight. I, I believe, I'm not even kidding, I, I swear, I think I've seen you perform before. Before you guys went on strike, yeah, I actually believe that I've seen you perform before. Um, before you guys went on strike, I think I, I mentioned last time in your show, uh, or in our show, uh, that you, I think it was about four months before you guys had gone on strike, I went to go check out the show, and I'm pretty sure you were the green knight at the time. I don't remember... But I'm, I'm I remember we talked about it, and yeah. uh, uh, it, it probably was me. Yeah. Um, pro- I'm just going to go with it probably was me. So. It's the beard, dude. Yeah. I, I recognize well, there's the beard. Like, there's, like, one other guy that I work with that, because, uh, um, you know, I, I had brown hair. Uh-huh. Uh, surprise, surprise, it's not my natural yeah. hair color. Yeah. Um, and there's one other guy that's, like, similar build, similar height, uh, white dude, beard with long brown hair. Okay. Um, okay. And we got confused all the time. Uh, so the joke was that I dyed my hair so that we weren't getting confused anymore, but it could have been either of us at that point in time. It was four <laughs> months before we went on strike. Yeah. So I dyed my hair, like, I think a day or two, no, like maybe like a week before we went on strike. So actually, like, my roots growing back in is the length of the strike. So oh, like, wow. when, we, when, we, when we walked back <laughs> out, yeah, like, when we walked back out, I was I completely blonde, um, and everything had just been done, and it was good. And then uh, now it's like, I mean, my hair's like, Oh, wow. Completely oh, growing go. in, um, yeah. and so that is uh, that is how long we've been on strike. And wow. by the time so we get done, I'm not going to have blonde hair anymore. <laughs> blonde so hair what is the, the time timeline? Uh, how long have you guys been on strike? 160 days. Um, Holy wow. shit! I think we just hit 160. Wow, that's yep. uh, that's a long a long go. I guess give us an update, man. What what's going on? What has happened? How um, is there any movement? Are you guys have there been talks? Uh, anything? No. No, uh, <laughs> no I, I'm I, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to like rack my brain to be like, is there something positive that happened? Uh, no, we we've been in like a we've been in like a rut for for like half of June, um, in most of July now, where there's just like nothing happening. You know, mm-hmm. we have no bargaining set at all. Okay. Um, they haven't even proposed dates, so I mean, I don't even have like tentative dates or anything. Yeah. Um, last bargaining did not go well. Uh, they started off, it was two days in a row, they started off um, bargaining about uh, just random stuff, you know, and, and came to the table and they were very nice, and, like respectful. Uh, and then the moment we brought up wages and, and horses and some other stuff, they just, it just tanked the entire, the entire really? conversation. It went really bad. I mean, really that, that's bad. the whole purpose. That's the whole of, purpose. Yeah. 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 Bargaining, right? Oh, and it makes no, it makes no logical sense either. So we found out, um, you know, because you, you learn a lot with bargaining because you actually get, like, especially since I'm at the negotiating table and on the, the negotiating committee, I get, like, information for all everybody's pay and all this other kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And um, everybody gets paid differently. Everybody started differently. Everybody gets different level promotions and different pay scales for promotions. It is so inconsistent. It is weird. It, it, Sounds it, like for, favoritism. It, um, yeah. It's 100% favoritism. But, I mean, they, they've, for so long now, they've just been passing out money to whoever they want to. That it, it, it's like I can't even propose like a raise across the board because I have to deal with like the last proposal was a pay structure that, that brought everybody in line that like had everything organized and they shot it down and immediately shot it down wow. um, and wow. said that they didn't want to change anything in the way that they were doing. So, so somebody could just come in, let's just say. John, for example, with his beard and, yeah. and come in and say, I, I could be a be- I could, I'm a better looking knight and I could come in here. He'd be the king. Get more yeah. pay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm, try- I'm making light of it a little bit, but honestly, that's something that could. No, it's 100%. Could have- yeah, 100% would happen. So is their system, I guess, like a performance based system or is it just completely favoritism? Well, that was, so that was the argument, right? So I, the, uh, normally I, I try to be respectful right because like the the negotiation happens between our lawyer and their lawyer like yeah. primarily 
Um, and I don't, you know, I only interject if he, if our guy needs me to say something most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but five and a half months into it, you know, I'm a little emotional a little and, and a little frustrated. And yeah. so, I mean, the last negotiating session had me like just straight arguing with our managers across the table um, about that very thing, like about the objective versus the subjective nature of raises, right? Um, my argument was that you can have a performance-based, I guess, bonus that you would put on top of like a, like a promotion or a raise, right? Yeah. Um, like but that there needs to be a baseline, right? Yeah. So like yeah. everybody starts in the same spot and then maybe say everybody gets a dollar or two dollars or something like that for getting a promotion. And then maybe there's like, you know, a wiggle room of like a dollar extra or something or 50 cents extra that you can get that it's like... Um, that it, it, you know, that's like a performer, you're really, really good at your job, right? Or we'd also propose that um, everybody gets paid the same, basically, but that there is a, an extra side part to the contract where you can negotiate additional pay with your boss and your management if you feel like you're, you deserve more, right? Um, so we, we, and there was like, that was like two options out of like 10 that we proposed that were all relatively similar that allowed for you to have like a subjective nature, an element to the raises. Um, they didn't want to do any of that. They don't want any structure to it at all they want to be able to say that i really like this person and he's gonna get you know six dollars and this guy i don't really like and he's gonna get 50 cents that's such an old model man yeah it's it really broken is. and it's broken 100 yeah. percent broken I and mean, we have guys we have like i point, pointed out two examples that are currently working right now two guys uh that are close friends one is a scab and one is not and they started at the same time they got put into the show as knights at the same time. They do the exact same level of show. They perform. They, they both train and ride horses. I mean, they are almost exactly the same in all aspects. Uh-huh. And one of them right now, the scab, is getting double promoted and is getting going to end up getting paid um, multiple dollars more than the guy that's not scabbing. Uh, and their excuse was that he doesn't train people um, there's some sort of element that they added in where, like, I guess you need to train people in order to promote to the next level, which is just not true. I argued at the table. I was like, that's not true. He literally trained me, right? So, like, I'm a perfect example of why you're lying. Uh, and they just, like, blah, 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 and then moved on. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not even joking. It was like somebody wow. just mumbled to themselves, and yeah. then we just moved on to something else. And I was like, like okay, right. well, we don't care. Yeah, and that's, that's how negotiating is. It's, it's just 100%, like... We will spend days talking about, and I keep using this example all the time, and even though it, it like, legitimately is an important issue, it's just a, a way to give you like sort of a comparison, like an apples to oranges, is that we'll spend days arguing about a shelf in the woman's locker room, right? And they will, they will like, we'll have like these long conversations about the merits of having space in, yeah, in the locker yeah. room and all this other kind of stuff. And it's like, wow, we're, we're really negotiating here. Um, and then it's like, all right, talk about wages. Nothing. Just tanks everything. Wow. Don't talk to me about anything. It, and they won't talk about wages. They refuse to acknowledge that there's animal abuse. They refuse to acknowledge that there's sexual harassment with zero um, protections and security. Uh, so that's our big three, and they don't touch them. If we touch them at all, they get, I mean, like, viscerally angry. They get very really? upset. Yeah. Like, is it just they, they don't want the admission of guilt out there? Or, like, what? what? Most likely. Maybe. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I think um, uh, what I've tried to explain to people for a, for a long time now is that um, – all, all corporations are motivated by greed. There's no doubt about that, right? But ours is, like, weird because it's, like, their <coughs> greed is, like, second or third on their priority list, right? Like, um, arrogance and pride is, like, what they're driven by, you know? So for them, it's it's being told that they're wrong about something. For them, it's being told that they need to change the way that they do things. Wow. Uh, and that's not okay. Um, according to them, that is unacceptable, and they will not, under any circumstance, agree to do that. And so, I, I you know, at this point, I, I don't... You know, we have things that we're trying. We have people that we're talking to. We're, we're, we're making moves, but um, we've sort of been stagnant for a bit. Um, and we just hit those lulls, right, where it's like we feel like a lot of things are going our way, and it's, like, positive, and that's fine. And then we will we'll hit this, like, valley where, like, nothing's happening and nothing's going our way. You know, we our retail department lost their election uh, with UFCW. Um, <clears throat> that indirectly kind of hurt us quite a bit. Uh, the optics didn't look good. IATSE is what, bargaining. What was the vote on that? 10-10, ten, ten, they tied. Really? And a tie goes to the company. So, so uh, explain to me, because I wasn't here, Jake, for your the first episode mm-hmm. that you did. Yeah. So you, you have a different union in there for the retail part of the company? Yeah. So our and company is split in, like, two companies, right? Okay. Yeah. And then let me ask you this. How how many medieval times are are there across the country? And also, how profitable is the company? 
um, nine locations in the United States, one in Canada. Uh, and we estimate based off, um, they're a privately held company, so we'll never be able to verify this, but based on different sources and things like that, I mean, they probably gross like half a, half a billion dollars a year. Really? Um, with 10 locations. I mean, probably in the hundreds of millions for sure, and that's just profit. Uh, our castle alone, the one in Buena Park, does the most volume by a large percentage and enough volume that we could actually keep three or four other locations um, afloat right. uh, with just our own our own profit. Yeah, I mean, I that I remember, and I don't, I can't tell how many years that's been there in Buena Park, it's down the street from Knott's Berry Farm. It's been there for so long. I remember when it first came in there. This was years and years ago, but. I still have never experienced med- medieval times, but I know the area that it's in is is a great location. You're right down the street from that. Yeah, very there's far. yeah, there's always been a yeah, lot yeah, of entertainment a lot of there, and then a lot of traffic. Disneyland's not too far, right there off the five freeway. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you guys get a, a lot of. People there's something like t- like 20 million people or something like that within like a five or 10 mile radius or something. I mean, there's some some astronomical amount of people that's like literally right around yeah. the uh, castle yeah. in Buena Park. Do you, so. Have you guys made any headway with, like, the, the teachers' unions? I know you said that, you know, a lot of teachers and uh, they were, you know, crossing the picket line for, yeah. you know, that, I mean, not, that's, not, that not is their what fault. they're doing. Not their fault. But. but, you know, how they book, like, out in advance. Have you made any headway with them, like, saying, hey, can you guys not book for the year or – I, we, that kind of stuff? Un, un, unknown at this point. I okay. mean, uh, uh, most of the bookings will probably happen in August. So okay. um, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean. Maybe we you should send out like a newsletter or something. To we've, we've sent out letters and we've, we've talked to uh, many of them directly. Um, I mean, you know, the Santa Ana uh, Teachers Association is like, it, it just um, cut us a check for our, our strike fund. I mean, they're, they're oh, very, wow. very, very oh, supportive. That's great. Um, unfortunately, Santa Ana also doesn't send anybody to, to medieval, times. medieval times, though. It's like really <laughs> weird. It's like the yeah. one that's like really helping doesn't even actually. Right? They're like, well, like, here's do, money. We can't make it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, they, and then like they like don't do school field trips or something. I don't know. It's a weird situation where I was like talking to them. I'm sure okay. that they do, but I don't know the, the, the details. Um, so uh, unknown, honestly. I, I have no idea. Yeah, um, I'm just, uh, just kind of curious. I mean, I know there's a lot of different ways to – to attack a problem, yeah. you know, I mean, indirect or like directly you have picketing, you know, but then indirectly you might have secondary picketing or, or whatever you oh, want no, to call yeah, it. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Like know? 80% of our fight, if not more, is behind – uh, behind closed doors right now. Yeah. Um, the the picket is still very it's, – it's very hard to explain this to my guys because I, they uh, oftentimes – um, they're they're a lot younger, so so everything's like kind of black and white. Uh, when it's really not, it's like a, we all live in gray, right? But um, I'm like I'm trying to explain to this like, hey, uh, the the picket is still very important, right? It's a visual representation of the fight. We need to be there. We need to show the company that we're not giving up, you know, and we need to try to turn away guests as much as possible. With that being said, it is almost at this point the least important aspect of the entire fight, right? Yeah, it, yeah. The, the fight is not going to be won or lost on the picket line, right? Yeah. So if, if for whatever reason, you know, and I'm trying to tell them the, this because I don't want them to be like, oh, if I can't come out today because I'm working or something like that, that's fine. You know, that's okay. We'll be okay. Now, I, I think a few of them have taken that too. Sweet, I'd never have to show up. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. That's <laughs> not, you know, I need you to still come out as much as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's important, but uh, uh, but it is not where the fight is going to be won or lost. It's not like the main battleground, right? Yeah. It's just some sort yeah. of I just feel like, it, I mean, you know, we talk about pickets in general, and they need to be somewhat disruptive. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel that you guys have somewhat been handcuffed by, I guess, the area, by the police in the area for sure. Um, yeah. which is crazy to me because most, you know, pol- policemen are their union. Yeah. You know, so I, I get it. I, I don't believe they are allowed to go on strike. They're not. Because, they're not. yeah, they're, I mean, they're a public yeah. service, right? Yeah. They also um, can't negotiate, uh, according to at least the Buena Park PD, they can't negotiate um, salaries. It comes from, I think, directly from the city. Uh, they yeah. sort of set yeah, I, I or think, something. Yeah, I mean, th- that all has to be voted on and all yeah. that stuff. Their right? unions are so, weird, man. They're, I yeah. mean, I, I, I have a lot but to I say mean, about these unions. But <laughs> union, and I, I know they do get protection, like like write-ups and all that stuff, right, for discipline and whatnot. Um, at the end of the day, their union, they should be supporting union, but it seems like, you know, they sometimes don't. It's hard. Maybe like a handshake deal with a company, maybe. Well, you know, I think what a lot of it, and this is – Purely speculation, but I think a lot of it has to do with 
people that bring in money within the city, mm-hmm. businesses, right? They kind of dictate, you know, their salaries and, and whatnot, how much uh, tax revenue is brought in. Then they, they budget everything out. They get, you know, their salaries. But they have a, a bigger voice. Those people, high, yeah. big taxpayers, you know, draw politicians and they see money, 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 you know. So yeah. I think that's what it kind of uh, – in my boils mind, that's kind to. of what it boils down to. Oh, there's sure. no doubt. I mean, like for I, I can give you like like uh, two a- examples of that happening. I live in Anaheim, mm-hmm. and a- Anaheim is is basically run by Disney, yeah. right? Yeah. There yeah. is no, there <laughs> is no, yeah. and I'm, I'm talking about like my direct representative in the, on the city council that's in that's like for my district is like a hundred percent in Disney's pocket. Like, there's no question. Oh, well, um, Disney I've has been deep to pockets. I've been to Anaheim <laughs> yeah. city council meetings before. I've listened to them speak. They yeah. do not care about anything unless it has to do with big business. Now, on the flip side, um, uh, we're a little bit fortunate. Uh, the Buena Park City Council is, for the most part, very pro labor. Yeah. Um, and uh, and they're you know I've we've we've spoken to them before, and we'll see if there's anything they can do to help. But um, you know. Uh, on an individual basis, there's at least three of them, um, uh, if not a little, if not four, that are uh, very genuinely like good people. They're, they're genuinely nice people. They genuinely care, um, and so uh, you know, hopefully they can help us out. We'll see, you know, what what kind of pull they have. But um, I know I don't know. It's just it's like we're kind of at this point. We're just taking things and throwing it against the wall. Just see what six, you know, because uh, nothing's working at bargaining. I mean, they don't have. Yeah. There's no. There's no. The the term. Um, like not bargaining in good faith, right? Like that phrase gets thrown around a lot, but mm-hmm. you, it is impossible to prove that that's a thing that's happening. So it gets thrown around a lot like, oh, can't we prove that the company is not bargaining in good faith, which it's clear that they're not? No, you can't. Because they can argue with you for three days about a shelf in the woman's locker room and that's bargaining in good faith. Yeah. They don't have to bargain with you about well, the things you want to bargain what about. What about <laughs> like, like actual proposals? I mean, are there proposals? Like, have you guys passed a proposal and they've passed a counter? And uh, are, are they continuing to do that? Have they... Kind of. I mean, so, I, you know, like, New Jersey is the other only other location that's unionized. And, so, and they were about three months ahead of us. So they had this, like, sort of, like, template... You know, that this sort of covered some of the things that we needed and didn't. And I took that um, along with my co-captain and uh, and basically rewrote most of what we needed. Um, and then over time, I mean, we're now at like a 30, 35, 40 page, you know, document that has a lot of information yeah. in it. It's just that, again, when we get to the parts of the document, like they we have not brought up horses at all since I got sued. And I mean, we we haven't even mentioned it, and that's because we were like, well, we need to talk about wages, you know, because that's that was like the one of the the driving factors of us, um, you know, sort of unionizing in the first place, and um, you know, because of that, so we started with wages, even though we hadn't talked about horses or really the sexual harassment stuff in a bit. And if wages was this bad, like if that conversation went that bad, then me accusing them of horse abuse, which is a hundred percent accurate, is just going to get way worse, or accusing them of not taking care of. Um, you know, uh, specifically our, our female employees is going to get way worse. Like, yeah. you know, we, we, we hit them with, like, out of the big three, we talked to them about what we thought would be, you know, the least offensive, and they immediately took offense, and, and, and it got really, really, really ugly. But have they passed? So you're, the document you refer to, I, you know, I kind of sum that up to be a, a proposal. Right, right? yeah. That, that's your, your first proposal. Have they countered on wages at all? No. So they just well, their counter on wages we're not interested is in your proposal. That's not entirely. <laughs> I sh- that's not entirely true. I, I should be fair. Um, they did counter on wages like I don't know six or seven months ago, and haven't moved since then. Um, and their counter on wages was uh, individual raises across the board. Because again, everybody gets paid differently because it's yeah. completely willy nilly. So it was individual raises across the board. It it uh, amounted to people getting about a dollar, a dollar fifty extra. Um, which was still not even close to where we needed. What to about be. hiring wages? We that was part of our proposal yeah. um, was to to structure and, and fix the whole thing, and they they um, shot that down outright. They don't sounds, want, they don't want like to have base all over the place. Yeah, they're all I over mean, the yeah. fucking place. I mean, you don't like you said you don't even have a, a structure a baseline. My structure that I proposed made perfect sense. Like it was, it was <laughs> like I, like I don't, well, yeah, I'm not saying there wasn't problems with it, but like yeah. that was a great starting point for us yeah. to go back and forth. Um, was there a progression in there? Like you get hired and you kind of go through progression period. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. I had everything. We had we had all of the um, 
we had all of the uh, the, the promotional levels because nights seems to be where we we stick a lot of our time because there's within the nights department is where there's actually like growth right um, like showcast doesn't really have a lot of growth um, the stables department doesn't really have a lot of growth so nights is the one that has like four or five different levels that you can sort of progress through um, with varying different pay and all that kind of stuff and so that was where a lot of the sticking point was and that was sort of where we started the fight and yeah I proposed having a starting pay at this with base with like a base level increase every single time you went up in level. Um, and then with the uh, the additional things that we talked about before where, where there was like other options for people to seek more if they thought that they were providing more for the company. Yeah. Um, and it made perfect sense, right? Because the, the, the people that had to do more at higher levels got paid more and it was more dangerous. And then you sort of capped out at... Um, a higher limit and then I also proposed once you capped out that there were other bonuses that you could receive on a yearly basis so that you didn't feel like you were um, completely just thrown aside once you hit like a certain cap yeah all this kind of stuff so would all of that have worked out I don't know because that was a conversation that we should have had I mean immediately rejected they rejected the entire thing outright they took they took like 10 minutes and then we're like no and that was the end of the conversation. That that's not true. That, it started a big fight, but yeah. um, it that ended seems up like out. it's you know not in my opinion, it's not bargaining in good faith. They're not really. Yeah, it's it, not. It's because they, they should be willing to like hear your proposal and then counter it with something. But I mean, at the end of the day, it, it is about uh, leverage. You know, how much leverage can you use to get them to move where you where you want them to move? And that's why I, I talked about disruption and. Mm -hmm. And disrupting well, we did, profits and all that stuff. And so. they don't have an incentive right now. I mean, I, I'll be 100% honest and, and be the first one to tell you that uh, in no way, shape, or form has our strike been disruptive or effective at all. It has been effective in getting sort of public support and media attention, which is good. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there was, I, since we've been on strike 160 days, I mean, tens of thousands of people have gone to see the show. You know, and, and our baseline for – I don't and I don't know the exact numbers or something like that, but it's only like – 300 people you know, need to go to the show in order to break even, right? And, you know, on average, we're seeing five or 600 with, with spikes in certain days. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, we had a show last night. It was Friday night. It should have been, um, it, there should have been 1,000 people there. And there wasn't even close, right? There might have been, you know, four or 500. So that's a ridiculously a big low difference, number. Yeah. yeah, that's a no low But they're still making money, right? They're so still it's, making money, it's, yeah. it's You're making money. You're in the green. You may not be making as much money as you as you want to. But again, Money is like only probably a second or third priority for them at this point. It is a hundred percent pride, and they will not be told at all that they are doing. And they're wrong. still flying in scabs, right? They're so still flying in scabs. Flying and have you guys tried scabs. to disrupt the scabs from coming in? Because I noticed when last time I was there that the, you know, they park like where the big buses come in, and then they walk through the through the back. Have you guys tried walking, like creating a picket line to the door there? Uh, no, we haven't. I mean, they they get um, they come in at, at weird times, and uh, and and some so of them just stagger walk. them out so that way. Yeah, and some and of them just walk like across the street from the hotel. So it's like kind of hard to like even pinpoint who's there, who's not there. And the other part of the problem is is that they've hired people. Um, so they I mean, they've hired like probably four or five people since we've really? been on strike, and um, it's really unsafe because they're taking these guys and they're rushing them through training nightwise. Uh, and to get them into the show, they're hiring night specifically. Yeah, so they're hiring people, putting them in as squires, and I mean I'm. I'm talking like hard rushing them into the show to train, and it looks awful. It looks really bad. I mean, these guys are getting hurt. Well, yeah, that um, was to say that's the biggest. The biggest concern is safety. Oh, 100 percent. So you can't just take a guy off the street who's never had any experience working with animals and be like, "Tonight, crazy you're tonight. jousting. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're gonna yeah. fall off this fucking horse." I got pushed in. I got pushed in. an hour, fifteen miles an hour. From Jeez. like from like squiring to nighting, mine was like somewhere around three and a half, maybe months to, to three to four months. But you got to work um, with the animals the entire time, right? Right, and so. I uh, well, two things happened. A, I had experience already, right? Because this is my second run at medieval times, so I yeah. sort of had a baseline for what I needed to do. Um, and B, uh, we had enough people at that time that a couple of us got put into what we called like a boot camp, where I would go in for you know eight hours a day and i wouldn't do the show at all i would just train for eight hours a day and i did that for that's great for months yeah um and that's not a, a permanent program is that something no, no that that we just got lucky at that point in time because we had some extra people and we maybe were that's something that. you guys should do for a proposal yeah that's was, a big safety thing there was uh there there was uh, well so that goes into um uh minimum uh staff requirements and that is that is not that is another a big, big no, no. sticking that's, point. That's, that's a, that's, we don't we don't talk about that. We don't talk about what or not there needs to be minimum staff. And so you know, but the, the difference is, is that these guys are sort of being um, they're being trained right, and they're being rushed in. But then they're also having to work in the show and stuff like that. And a couple of the guys just got put in, and I've seen the video footage of them performing, and I'm like, 
you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself or you're going to hurt somebody else. And it's bad. It's really bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, we know for a fact that they're reaching out to our guys asking when they're coming back in. So I would say that uh, you can't tell me that it's, you can't tell me that you're completely fine and nothing's wrong. Um, and then send text messages to people asking them to come back in. Yeah. Um, yeah. It may not be as you know, effective as I want it to be, but is, yeah. it's not there. It's, yeah. oh, it's awful. It's terrible right now. And I mean, you know, we, al- we already established that their chicken sucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, you know, but that's... What, what did you say? The chicken, the chicken sucks. It's not good. Um, oh, it's, the, it's oh like, the food. Yeah. yeah no. what, chicken what's funny food. is that everybody talks about getting a turkey leg, and I'm like, we don't sell turkey legs. It's not a thing that we do. We, we sell a ha- like a big-ass half piece of chicken. Yeah, they, they give you a half a chicken. And they just it's slam shitty. it down on your plate, and uh, it is the driest, most unseasoned chicken you've ever had in your life. It's terrible. It's um, shitty. You don't... You, you, the chicken is there to put food in your stomach for the alcohol that you're drinking, right? So yeah. that's exactly what it's for um so that you can have a good time but uh normally at the very least you go and you know let's say you drink a little bit and you can get really get into the show and and um i'm not saying that you know we don't make mistakes we don't have bad days but for the most part we're our crew has been fairly consistent on providing a really good experience yeah and now it's like dude it's a toss-up on whether or not you're getting one of the new guys or not new guys or half new or 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 tired you know tired scabs that are out there and uh, we see the videos and, and we see what's going on. It's not good. The show's not good. The quality's tanked. It's bad. Um, I'm sure guests are either oblivious, which is most of the time probably, yeah. or notice that it's bad. And people come out and tell us all the time, it's really bad in there. And I'm like, well, I told you that before you went in. But <laughs> Are the people that serve, are they part of the other structure, the other union that yeah. you were talking about? They're part of the other company, right? So the, the, the castle split into two companies. It's okay. Medieval Times, Medieval Knights. Medieval Knights covers all of the performing actors. Okay. That's okay. all that's unionized, right? Okay. Um, on the other side of the equation, you've got, like, you know, our sound and lighting department, which is exactly what it sounds like, the sound and light for the show. Yeah. Um, they've unionized with IOTC, okay. uh, which oh. is really good. They've started bargaining. Supposedly, it was going well. I'm waiting for the other foot to drop, but we'll see. So does that mean... An- in our world, you know, does that mean since they're used union that they won't cross your picket line? No, no, it doesn't mean it doesn't work out exactly is like that. that. <laughs> is that something? I mean, as a union, was, as a union yeah, member, I mean, regardless of what they, union, they should they not be crossing. Can't. I'm really blown away by the, yeah. all of this yeah. because you got all these different factions in in this company. You got lighting, and they're unionized, and I would think, okay, well, we're not going to cross our picket line, and then they go out. You know, the servers, they don't want to cross the picket line. I mean, that would put tremendous pressure on the company. Yeah. Well, the servers don't care. Uh, so the, the server, I mean, I'm saying all of them, but the servers, uh, I mean, you know, the one server on a, on a Friday night or a Saturday night working a double or a triple um, can make more money than I make in two weeks. Um, wow. I mean, the night, the night's department is the lowest paid department in the castle. That, like, is, and it, that is insane. It's how, by how is like, that it's even like a actually too. provide the entertainment. Yeah. It's like by like a pretty wide margin too. So it's, so da- it's the most the dangerous job. Serve the shitty chicken make more than you do. Yeah. Through tips and everything. They make a, an, that's a, a, fucking oh, an astronomical that's, amount more. Okay, well, they, so I mean, their base pay is $15 pay. an hour and then they get tips, right? I make $18 yeah. an hour. They barely, they have to get tipped like twice and then they make just as much money as I did. And they serve... 300 people yeah, in a day. Yeah, they're serving, a, they're so serving each sections uh, at a time. And like I said, I wasn't here for your first episode. That's okay. You make $18 an hour to get on a horse? Eighteen fifty. yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking, uh, uh, I know, honestly. <laughs> you could risk you couldn't life. give me a $50 bill to get on a horse. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what I, I just, I, also, I'm deathly afraid of horses. I remember, <laughs> remember also that, that I, I then jump off the horse. And, uh, you, yeah. and you, for... <laughs> blown away. I am. Uh, I just. I, I. The amount of work and everything that you have to do, and working with you know, a, an animal and horses are very smart, you know, and you have to train those horses, you know, who's the boss, and you performing and doing all that for the amount of money. And I'm not. I. You guys deserve a lot more money than what you guys. Are you want. You pay. want me to. You want me to make you even more mad. Uh, I. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going away. Please, please share. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 two people that are in charge of training our horses abuse the shit out of them, and take whips to them and beat them until they bleed. And then I have to get on one of the most traumatized animals that I've ever experienced in my life and hope that he's uh, okay. having a good night. That he's okay, and then I have to ride him going twenty or thirty miles an hour and then jump oh, off no. of him. Yeah. They get up to thirty miles an hour. 
They, they can, can, yeah. They can. I mean, yeah. some of them. So don't get me wrong. The, the, I, if so, I'm being honest, the horse that I ride is very slow. Get on top slow, of my car. <laughs> I'm going to get it up to 25. I, I don't even want to get in your car. You know, you, you're, <laughs> I don't even want to get in your car, for one. But that that's insane to me. And they'll prioritize guests, um, uh, guest enjoyment over, over – uh, your, the us, safety over our safety in i mean to an extreme wow. degree i i have um uh it's listen this is a bad thing to say i understand what it is but it's just the nature it's just the nature of where we're at right now so you know the harassment stuff um specifically like the sexual harassment happens to both men and women the difference is is that when i get harassed which is on a nightly basis um i am six foot 195 pounds so at some point i can probably just be like don't touch me um and it'll it'll be fine uh, from from guests, is that uh, yeah. So, and well, to us, it's almost like to us, it's it's. It, I, <laughs> is it so? I smile a lot when I talk about how bad this stuff is because yeah. that's like our coping mechanism is just laughing yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, and so I've been called out before by saying like, "You're saying some really dark stuff, and you're smiling at the same time." And I'm like, "I don't know how else to respond to it." So yeah. I just kind of have a big smile on my face. Yeah. Um, for us, it's a. Uh, it, yeah, it's like a rite of passage almost that some some little old lady that gets hammered will touch you, um, will grab will grab your crotch or grab your ass or something like that while she's taking pictures with so, you, and, so like, and you just you just sort of you're like you're like all right like I get like hey like I officially became a knight tonight boys um, and the uh, uh, you know but it's like it, it is it is it's it's to us it's funny right but it's not funny it right is, when, yeah, it's, it's when it's when it's your not funny, but when it, it's your it coworker really who's you know it's a five five you know a hundred and fifteen yeah. pound girl right like in some creepy dude that's my size gets hammered with his family standing right there yeah. and and goes to to, uh, to touch people in places he's not supposed to and it's um you know every single time they brought it up people have gotten fired people have gotten demoted people have gotten moved around um, people have gotten yelled at for bringing it up i mean you are not allowed to speak about um the rampant sexual harassment that that's happens on a daily basis that's bonkers because so, that is a, that is a human right don't. They don't have right? like security there with you guys. Oh. Like, <laughs> let me. So I've never been. So I'm show. laughing again about it because I'm yeah. just like, no. <laughs> so Thank after the show, they give the ability to the customers to come and take pictures with you, be yep. around you guys, mm -hmm. and this is when all this happens. A lot of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. The the, the servers are getting harassed and stuff too. Every single. I mean, the, the what will happen is like servers will be like carrying. Uh, uh, food trays and stuff, and like some dude will go and like lift up skirts and stuff. So, so let me let me ask you this: Are you are you, are you saying that the company is uh, maybe endorses the fact that you're in medieval times and go grab the server by the hair the and pull her down? The like, I mean, I'm, they, like what I, what happens is is that 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 sort of behavior is is not supposed to happen, right? But the the idea that you can come in and get in the spirit of things and call people like call the women wenches and sort of yell and cheer and get hammered and stuff is encouraged. There's uh, just no safety rails, okay. right? So so that kind of behavior would be fine and it would be sort of in the spirit of being in medieval times right. if there was safety rails, if there was security, boundaries. if there were yeah. the reasons there should be boundaries. don't don't cross the boundaries. But that I mean every single day a girl i guarantee you one of our female employees is harassed in some form or fashion and uh, some of them are probably like ah it is what it is and they move on and some of them are or not okay with it, it and don't and are afraid to speak that, out and i mean it happened to our retail department our retail department is is the girls that sell all of the uh, like the fake swords and the swag and take the pictures and all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. they were the ones that were trying to unionize with ufcw and one of their selling points was they're all young women for the most part. I mean, there's a few guys in there, but they're mostly young women. And it was like, we get harassed all the time. And the company came in and union busted hard at the 11th hour um, wow. and scared the shit out of all of them. Wow. And uh, and then we went 10-10. And the way that it goes is um, ties go to ties go to the yeah. company. I'm, I'm, I'm just blown away. It's I crazy. mean, strippers get more... More Respect boundaries. I know, that. right? Yeah. Like you go in there. Don't touch. Like, Do you can't touch. Um, this is they. They oh, set yeah. the boundaries. Yeah, right? you would. You would get. Uh, you would get th it's physically a teeth thrown out in. <laughs> if you. If you. That's uh, crazy. They don't yeah, care, man. They don't, they don't care at all. That's nuts. They just don't. That's care. wild. So, you being on the pick line, one of the things I kind of wanted to bring up, and it, it, you know, obviously this is not a UPS centered show, but I, I definitely want to touch base on. Number one, the amount of time you've been on strike and what what it is to be on strike. Because you, you understand. And we got this big contract coming up where in, what, nine, nine days. days. On the 31st, from right? From now that yeah. we could potentially go on strike. You know? Oh, and so, by the way, if you walk out, I'll be right there with you. Well, I, I definitely appreciate Thank you, sir. That. But, you know, if you could just, just speak to that, uh, what these guys are are 
looking at the reality of a strike, because we've said it on here, um, we've been on some picket lines. Mm -hmm. I've never, in, in my, you know, doing, I never have actually been out on strike for myself. You know what I mean? As far as, like, the company that I was with, I, I've definitely been on a lot of picket lines, mm -hmm. um, supported a lot, ha had to run some, you know, as a business agent. But um, what is it like, just to all the UPSers out there, What what is the unsurety uh the just like what is all that like you know it's it's hard for me to answer that question in, in relation to you guys because um uh generally speaking uh when teamsters goes on strike um things shut down so uh, <laughs> uh it it, it, uh, it 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 works it's effective uh the the thing that i would say it, what i'm if i if i could go back and do this all over again right um i would still do the same thing right we would still probably end up on strike but what i would tell people is is that you need to be prepared for the long haul right because the you know even if even if you think it's only going to last 3 days or it's going to last 7 days or whatever the situation is just prepare your mind for being out there as long as it takes um, because that is uh, the biggest thing for the picket line is morale, right? You know, we started with 20 people on our picket line that were fired up, ready to go. We were chanting, and we yeah. have, on average, like three people right now. Wow. Um, and that's what we have to deal with on a daily basis. Now, the difference between us and most people is that we get to watch people cross our picket line every single day, and it sucks. Um, and most people don't have to deal with that, just the nature of the job. But um, what I always tell people is prepare, uh, again, prepare for the long haul. Um, Communicate with each other because the the thing about the one positive thing um, Well, there's a couple but the one major positive thing about the picket line is it brings people together um, and you you will never be uh, Closer with the person um, that you work with than when you're standing next to them on the picket line fighting for the same thing Regardless of like your own whether or not you have issues with that person or anything like that It's like you guys can it's like a family right like you can fight and you can argue and all that kind of stuff But when it comes down to it, you know, you're there when it matters um, and that's what really being on a picket line together represents is um, is kind of is creating those that family and those bonds and so you know clear effective communication with everybody and um making sure that you're staying in touch with people, making sure that you're prepared for the long haul, and then um, and just really being organized is, is the way to effectively pick it in my mind, um, just based off of my experience. And it, it sucks, right? It's not fun. Like, there is nothing that I, I would rather do anything in the world than go to the picket, right? Like, and I'm going after this. I'll be there, like, all day today, and I do not want to go. I have no desire to be there at all. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and when I get there, don't get me wrong, when we have fun, right, we, we, we joke and we have fun and we try to keep spirits up, but nobody wants to be there. Nobody wants yeah, to be you'd rather be doing something else more productive with your time. rather be doing something else, yeah. yeah. Um, you'd rather have a contract be working. rather have a contract yeah. be working, exactly. And so, you know, um, it's going to be hard, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. I have days where I have, um, I have snapped at my own people. I have snapped at guests on accident because I was frustrated and, um, and I shouldn't have done that. And I, I have days where I'm like, the world is ending. And then I come back in the next day and I'm like, don't, don't worry guys, we got this right. And, yeah. and it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions from start to finish. And especially like, you know, I'm in a unique position that uh, my union is so small and our bargaining group and stuff is so small that I know what's going on at all times. I have, there is not a single thing that happens that I generally don't know what's happening or don't know uh, what's going on or wasn't a part of the decision making. When you're in a bigger union, when you're, when you're on the line with hundreds of people or whatever the situation is, especially if everybody goes out on the 31st, yeah. um, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of people, a lot of UPS members out there that may not have all the information that they need. And so, um, and that's, that's, that's okay. That's the nature of the beast, right? You have to put, um, you have to put your faith and your trust in your elected leaders, and you have to understand and realize that um, they are doing everything in their power to work for you, and, uh, and it's going to be stressful, and sometimes you're going to feel like you don't know what's going on, and that sucks, but you have to trust the process, and you have to trust the people that you elected. Um, and, and I will say this is that if, if things do not go your way uh, on the 31st and everybody walks out, um, please be nice to your union organizers uh, and your strike captains because I promise you they are very stressed out. <laughs> you know, so, I, I, gotta, I yeah. gotta say, just, just in you saying that, it's, it's something that I agree with you wholeheartedly on and I, I really do want people out there to get that message is that you have elected these these people to represent you, and that's that's what they're doing. Um, and not everyone is going to get an individual conversation. Like you said, you have a small bargaining unit; it's a little bit easier. Um, you know, one of the struggles that that all of us deal with, you know, steward and, and business agents, um, is 
trying to get information to people that we that is honestly we, we feel like it's necessary and we want to get all that information to everybody but you can't have an individual conversation with say a thousand people in a building um, you know it's just impossible yeah so I, I just want to I guess uh, agree with you really is what it is <laughs> well you know uh, I we, we um, I, I started off by doing this and I encourage him, again Everything that I'm saying is from personal experience, right? So there's there's different ways to handle things. There's the the 100. percent I've made a lot of mistakes and done a lot of things I shouldn't have done and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. um, just learning through the process. But uh, what I used to do is is I would um, I had a like a like a what am I trying to say? Like a speech at the end. They used to make fun of me. I'd have a speech at the end of every night, right? Yeah. Um, and that was just to update people on what's going on. And still, even to this day, at the end of the night people will hang around and ask me, is there anything going on? And so it's those kind of conversations that you um, that you can have, right? So it's like you're, you are right that you you can't have individual conversations with everybody. And specif- uh, specifically, you know, like there's 160,000 SAG members on strike right now, yeah. right? The vast majority of them have no idea what's going on. And and I don't mean that in a bad way. I you, you know what the fight is and you know that you're doing the right thing. And that's really all you need to know in order to, to, to maintain and to hold on. You know that you're not being taken care of, you know that your friends aren't being taken care of and that's not fair and you're standing up and you're doing the right thing. And that is really all you need to know and that's what you need to hold on to because that's the most important part is that you are doing the right thing thing right and then the rest of it will come your leaders will talk to you you will have messaging you will have emails you will have all that kind of stuff it just may not come in the way that you expected it may not come in the frequency that you want Um, but all of that is just details the devil's in the details right Um, don't worry so much about the details focus on the fact that you are doing the right thing you cannot you the royal you and then this is we honestly at this point we as consumers or as as employees and as workers um, cannot continue to go on with the way that things have been going on. Uh, and I'm talking across the board. This isn't a UPS thing. This isn't a Medieval Times thing. This is workers everywhere are getting, are getting shit labor, on. Yeah. This is a labor thing. You, we cannot. This is unsustainable. You no, cannot I, continue to do this. I 1,000% so. <laughs> agree with yeah. you. I think we're, we're coming into a, a new era. Mm-hmm. I really do. I think this, uh, you know, with just inflation the way it is, with everything, wage growth not meeting where we need to be, you know, um, working uh, standards, Mm -hmm. safety standards, like all these things that are resurfacing. Um, I know that, you know, back back in the day, there was a a big labor movement and they had to fight for a lot. It seems like a lot of those issues are resurfacing. I think the last time we we, uh, discussed, I mean, you know, I just saw a report on uh, child labor coming back. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, like (laughs) Iowa or some shit like that repealed child labor laws. are Are you kidding me? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. And like, and, and when they, by the way, there's a picture of them like signing the bill that like repealed the law or whatever. Um, I don't think it was Iowa. I don't remember what state it was. But like in the background, there's a bunch of like smiling children. And I was, and I'm like, like nine what? years old. We get to work. What is happening? <laughs> like, but seriously, like, like, like the 40 hour work week, weekends, overtime, holiday pay, uh, you know, uh, minimum wage, anti child labor laws. All of that came from unions. Every, yeah. all of the stuff that you enjoy on a day to day basis, your normal daily structure when it comes to work and work life balance, um, even as un- unfair as it is right now, is only in place because unions fought for it. I mean, if unions were, didn't exist in the 50s and the 60s and, and fought for all of the, these kind of changes and, er- and bef- even before that, then you'd be making $2 an hour working seven days a week, 15 hour days. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, yeah. that's, and, that, and that's, just the, that's just what it would be. And, and we, Sounds we, like it, my job now. It's, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, it's proven. It's proven. You, uh, you don't even have to <laughs> really, you don't even have to really do the research on the history of unions to know that. Just look at your own job. Right. Look at what your companies are trying to do to you. Right. Look, look at what they're telling you. Look at why we're unionizing in the first place. Um, they would do everything in their power to screw you over. And they are doing everything in their power yeah. to screw you over. And the only reason yeah. that we have power right now, <coughs> as neutered as it is, is because of unions. And we have to we have to bring it back. I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't know how much the Teamsters like to bring up their history, uh, but you know the '50s and the '60s were very, very, very powerful unions. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, Jimmy Hoffa was burying bodies behind the dumpster, and uh, and so that, we, that weren't caused, <laughs> we weren't there. You weren't there. You weren't there. You weren't there. Uh, and That's that, not that, on that, me. Caused, that caused a lot. Of, listen, it caused a lot of problems, right? It, it gave unions a bad name. We, we've yeah. been discussing this a lot lately. Is that um, I didn't know this. Um, I grew up in Texas, and we didn't. 
fucking talk about unions, right? I, I'm yeah. pretty sure the only reason I knew a union was good was from Shrek. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and seriously, and that's why, I really, I, like, I had no idea. And um, we, we were talking about it the other day because everybody that grew up, specifically, like, even in California, they had all these, uh, they were talking about how they remember that they were, they were in school and unions were bad, right? They were taught unions were bad. And, and I was like, I don't know why I knew that unions were good. I couldn't tell you why I knew that. I don't remember ever learning about it. Um, but that's this. That's the the situation. Is is that through um, because of because of corruption in the past that was not anybody's fault uh, today, um, and because of some mistakes, uh, lawmakers were able to come in and make laws that were benefit corporations, not workers, right? And then on top of that, education systems were designed to continue to talk about unions being bad and corrupt, even though it hasn't been that way for sixty or seventy years. And so you you know all of this is an uphill battle. All of this needs to change now, right? Yeah. But this doesn't just start with this isn't just like everybody needs to go and join a union, which, yes, everybody needs to go and join a union. That's, that should be commonplace. But now we have to actually do more work than we should have to do, right? Now I have to go talk to elected officials and make sure that they're writing the correct laws or that they're repealing laws that are hurting yeah. us. Um, you know, I was in, there's a law that's being trying to be passed in California right now, I think, I, I'm going to totally butcher this, somebody will know better than I do, that it is trying to ban captive audience meetings. I was in captive audience meetings what? for five months. Um, before before we unionized in November, right? I mean, like literally, it was like four or five months of captive audience meetings. And there's somebody out there right now that's trying to to ban that, and that's a positive. That's a huge yeah. thing that we need, yeah. right? So it's those kind of things where it's like, I can't even tell you the details because I haven't looked up the law yet, and I need to. I need to go sit down and like educate myself. Everybody needs to go sit down and educate themselves. We need to vote for the right people. We need to do all these kind of things, and it's it's going to take decades, right? Yeah, like we have to un we have to undo decades of of shit decision making and it's going to take decades to fix it and it's frustrating because i'm on the picket line now yeah. right and uh and, and i'm not going to see any of that right by the time that i get over it um but what we can do right now is help each other out right and there's a reason that i'm going to be on the picket line with you on the 31st if you walk out and there's a reason that you're on the picket line with me a lot and there's a reason that you know wga came out to support us and i went to go support wga and you know um <laughs> And the, the Starbucks workers and the Home Depot workers and the Trader Joe's union, it's, it's everybody right now needs to stop, um, needs to drop the drama, needs to stop fighting with each other, and we have to build solidarity and we have to build a movement. And it needs to be across the board with everybody. It doesn't matter what union you are. If you're labor, you're labor. Yeah. And that is what ties you, us together. You actually brought up something that, that brought something to mind, and it's something that we've talked about here. And at the end of the day, it, it does boil down to selfishness, right? That's, I, and I'm not out here to call people out or call people selfish. But I think what people fail to understand is that a lot of the stuff done that might be hard for us, that's, that's hard fought, hard won, is to benefit the generation behind us mm -hmm. or you After know us. multiple generations behind us. And some people, you know, don't really have that in there or they just can't see that. Like, you know, one of the things we had in – by all means, the membership spoke in regard to, to a strike fund, right? We, we try to have a local strike fund. And I, I get it. At, at the end of the day, they didn't want to pay the $10 or whatever they want, you know, to do. But they don't understand that, like, stuff like that may not benefit you right now. And the fight you take on sometimes is for that, that generation. You might not reap those, those benefits, yeah. but it makes us stronger as a whole. It makes us, you know say when you're retired and and the generation below you is is fighting for better retiree health care mm -hmm. you know what i mean where mm -hmm. you don't may not have a voice or may not have a say it's just you know i think selfishness is a, a, a tough thing to get around it is and it, like, it's hard you know you work eight nine <laughs> ten twelve hours a day and then you're uh, you're asked to do, to do more yeah right and that is a big ask and that's yeah. hard um, you know, but the, the reality of this situation is, I mean, we won't get into this, but if you were to, if you wanted me to get on my soapbox about, we, we <laughs> shouldn't be working eight hours a day. Um, you know, there, there is a, there's like literal evidence that, that, that goes into you're more productive if you work le like actually less time. Uh -huh. Um, you know, four hours, like four eights is like, is like supposedly somewhere around like the sweet spot of, of you being at your most productive because nobody gets shit done on Fridays anyway. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, uh, I mean, it's, I, or, or Mondays, right? Like it's, it's. You know, it's just, if anybody's worked in an office environment, you get nothing done on Fridays and nobody starts anything on Mondays until halfway through the day. Um, 
So like, why this even be true. there? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, but but you know, aside from that, is that uh, yeah, it's it's a big ask and it's hard. And I think that it's telling right now that so many people are are actually actually like standing up and yeah. finally starting to say something because that's how bad it is. Yeah. Um, and in regards to what you're saying, I mean, this is for everybody out there. If your union doesn't have a strike fund or doesn't have a large strike fund, you should be concerned um, yeah. because uh, take it from somebody who didn't have a strike fund when they walked out. It is the most stressful part of striking, and um, and you know it. There is like literally like 200,000 people or something like that, or a little bit less than that, uh, that are on strike in Hollywood. Um, the, the major um, movie production companies and stuff like that, like Disney and Universal and all kinds of stuff, are literally just bleeding millions of dollars a day at this point, mm -hmm. and they are still holding on. Yeah. So, you know, if you think that you're going to halt operations for three days and, oh, yeah, don't get me wrong, they'll lose $10, and they'll be like, I didn't want to lose $10, I'm going to come back to the bargaining table, not going to happen. Um, they will do everything in their power to keep you down. And the really, the only recourse that you have is just to continue not working. And the best way that you can continue not working is if you have access to a strike fund to keep you afloat, right? Yeah. Um, or you have access to a second job or something like that. I mean, that, you know, um, one of the first things I said to you when I got in today was that uh, I was dealing with a conversation with one of my guys who was asking for money. And I was like, and you know, the conversation is, I don't have any. You know, and, and I, I have to figure out, like, you know, did, like I'm looking at uh, our, our GoFundMe because everything that we do is crowdfunded at this point because yeah, yeah. we don't have we don't have a strike fund. Our union is small. <coughs> um, and so I have to look at, you know, our GoFundMe and say, like, is, did anybody donate recently? Is it is it coming in? Do I have access to it? Can I send you the money? And, <coughs> you know, thankfully, for the most part, I've been able to help almost everybody out. Um, yeah. But those are, you know, I, that's, you know, once a week or once every other week, I'm dealing with somebody being like, I don't have, I don't have groceries. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I'm going to, I, I have to be the one, they don't blame me. Thank, thank God. But I still feel bad. Right. Because I have to be the one to be like, I don't have enough money to give that to you. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is, um, you know, this is what I'm about to say now is an, it is inherently selfish. It really, really, really is. But I'm going to hit on that you that everybody needs to be really 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 kind please to their strike organizers and their their strike captains and their their business agents and stuff like that because um it is we're the ones that led you out right you know what i'm saying like i there is 30 people that i convinced to walk out yeah. and we are we're about to hit six months <clears throat> excuse me we're about to hit six months and uh and i don't know that it's gonna that i i prepared them for a year you know i prepared them for 15 months and if we lose I, I took I took 15 months of, of their job away from them, and I don't know if they can get it back. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that was regardless of whether or not they blame me, regardless of whether or not logically it doesn't make sense, it is my fault. Um, and so you know there are there are members in your union that are having that same internal conversation with themselves right now. You know, um, there's sure. there's something like 300,000 UPS members that might walk out. 340,000. Yeah, that might walk out right. on 31st. There is somebody somewhere right now that it, it, that cannot sleep because they don't know if if this is going to work out. You know, um, and so just remember that uh, that there is a lot of people that are fighting for you, and uh, the best thing that you can do is dig in and do exactly what you're supposed to do, which is go on strike, stay on strike, and keep the morale high. You know. Um, and that is a uh, that is a tough ask. Yeah, but mm -mm. Yeah. that is uh, but that is the best thing that you ask. can do. Not unless you have any more specific questions about stuff. Honestly, I, I, one of the questions I wanted to ask was, you know, you being out so long on strike, um, I'm sure in, in your mind you've gone over plans and and what's next. What you know. I mean, as much as you can share, I don't want to, you know, get involved in your strategies per se, but just like what's next? Like what is, what's on the horizon? Um, you know, I, I know the previous show you kind of discussed about if you did go out a year, the decertification thing. And, and I mean, yeah, what's, what's in your mind right now? So we uh, today actually is our uh, I think if I if I remember correctly today is our one year anniversary from submitting cards. So we've been doing this for a year, and then uh, no, the end of November is our year anniversary from uh, from actually voting the union in. Right. Okay. So you know we have um, it's it's not there. The company knows. We know. There's it's no there's no hiding that the that November's sort of like a weird deadline for us. You okay. know. Um, 
there's things that we can do. There's ideas that we have. If we come up to November and we still haven't made progress, we can, you know, we can fight different things. But November, I, I need to, I need to make something happen. Uh, we need to make something happen by November, really. And uh, that doesn't give us a whole lot of time. You know, it only gives us four months, give or take, a yeah. little bit less than that. Um, and so, you know, yes, I have plans. And yes, we are actively working to do things. Um, I don't, uh, uh, nothing that I can really talk about um, um, publicly. Uh, offline, yeah, yeah. Offline, I'll totally tell you guys what's going on. But the, uh, um, you know, I, I don't know. At this point, my biggest, my biggest fear and my biggest concern is is that I don't have anything you know I don't have a bullet in the chamber that's a hundred percent win right I don't have yeah. a guarantee I have no guarantee at all about anything everything that I do is like sort of a shot in the dark at this point it's like a 50 50 and um and I'm a gambler I'm a big gambler like I like you know whenever yeah. you guys are ready let's roll to Vegas like yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go <laughs> um, uh, but there's a different yeah there's a difference between gambling you know with my livelihood uh which is is one thing and gambling with uh, uh somebody uh, else's gambling well just with other people's lives at this point yeah. and uh, and that I'm kind of that's like kind of how I'm operating is that I'm kind of we're rolling the dice and just trying to make it work and you know the thing is is that um dude the company it just continues to do stuff that it, it, it just pisses people off, right? You know, I mean, they're you, you, sound and lighting um, unionized with IOTC, right? Um, mm -hmm. Since that happened, they've gone to six other castles and fired the entire sound and lighting department and replaced them oh, with automated, really? uh, replaced them with automated spotlights. Um, and so, you know, so they're trying to get ahead of it. Uh, they have contingency yeah. plans. Wow. Yeah, well, that, but that's you know, and so if that doesn't, luckily for me, most of my crew that's on strike right now is is paying attention to that and realizing that oh we are we're 100 percent doing the right thing and digging in right yeah. um but if that doesn't scare you you know if if anybody sees this that is uh that that, that actually works at medieval times um or even we're closely related to medieval times if that doesn't scare you it should um and if that it, it doesn't even have anything to do with medieval times because that's this is not the only company that does this i mean the, the playbook for companies is the same right you know uh, did you did you see that um NBC Universal uh, like cut down a bunch of trees on the strike line for WGA and SAG. Do you oh. know what I'm talking about? So in, out, in, uh, out in front of Universal, um, and keep in mind, we're getting into like ridiculously hot weather now, right? Everybody yeah. here is, it's like miserable outside. Um, where they were striking out in front of uh, uh, Universal, they, uh, they were striking on the sidewalk and it was covered by these like big, gorgeous trees that were like lining the sidewalk. Um, it was providing a lot of shade and that's yeah, yeah. sort of where they were picketing. Um, Universal cut, trimmed all the trees back. So uh, every, the, it's like, it is like literally in that entire sidewalk wow. now. Like you want to pick like, it. You're it's like a valley, it's like a valley of death in that sidewalk right now. So they, um, they just like trim the branches or they cut the whole tree down? No, they trim the branches. But I mean, okay. I'm talking like if you look it up after this, if you see it before and that's after, I mean, they went in move, and man. like, murdered those well, trees. Well, it's not, it's not something you do at this time of year. No, yeah. they did it 100% because the they're on strike. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, but, I mean, Medieval time, Times right. landscaped in front of um, in front of their big sign. We had, we there was this grassy area where we would sit and we would, like, hold signs and, like, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. They came and landscaped the whole thing, um, took out all the grass, put in mulch and then flowers, and then didn't do any upkeep on it. So now they're all dead and looks like shit. And, uh, um, and we <laughs> don't sit there anymore, right, yeah. because it's all mulch instead yeah. of grass. And so it's like... You know, and, and they painted over crosswalks for us, and then at, at, for us because they didn't want us picketing in the driveway anymore. And um, at Universal, they uh, they like tore up concrete and put up scaffolding in some of the crosswalks or some of the areas where people were striking. It's the same thing. They all do the same thing. Yeah. It's yeah, like that's it's, their way of disrupting they make it harder your strike. Yeah, yeah. but it, yeah. it's just it's it's amazing to see that like, I'm, and I'm not joking when I say there is probably literally a playbook that gets handed to these people whenever they take charge, and they do the same thing. UPS will do the same thing to you guys, right? Yeah. It's all yeah. of the exact same thing, um, and so you know everybody just needs to be very aware of like what's going on, and 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 if you think that. Oh, that's not going to happen to us. You're wrong. <laughs> You're yeah. just flat wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a hundred percent going to happen to you. You, happen, you yeah. need to be. You need everybody. Everybody has got to start paying attention to what's going on. Just in general, right? Like yeah, it, just in general, movement. everybody's got to start yeah. paying attention to what's going on. But um, pay attention to what's happening on strike lines across the country right now. Pay attention to what the companies are doing because they're doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. And so, if you are in a union fight right now, if you're thinking about going on strike, if your contract's up for negotiation. Pay attention to what's happening and anticipate that this is going to happen and start to prepare for it. Because I had no 
fucking clue what I was doing when yeah. I started this a year ago. And I learned very quick and I learned the hard way. And I pray that nobody has to have that experience yeah. that I did, right? It, it prepare, like, like listen to what I'm telling you right now. Listen to what is happening at SAG and it, with, with WGA and it, at Universal and stuff like that. Pay attention to what's going on and prepare yourselves because they all do the same shit and it's going to be bad. What are you thinking over there, Silas? I, I'm just, he's, I mean, I, I, I <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I give you a lot of respect, brother. I, uh, you yes, are, in my opinion, and the way I view you is you're, you're a true leader. You're putting yourself out there. Um, I can't imagine the struggles that you're having right now. So I, I'm just in awe right now. I really am. <laughs> um, and uh, <clears throat> it, it really uh, irritates me that the company uh, is taking that position the way they have with you guys. But um, look, man. Uh, things don't work out. You obviously, <laughs> you should be an organizer, bro. <laughs> you know, for real. You yeah. you have that in you. you. You're you're passionate about what you do, and you know, I, I hope and pray for you guys for the best. You know, because uh, what you're doing is the right thing, man. It really is. You know, everything that we've talked about off camera and how things go and over there and how they treat you guys is fucking. It's it's crazy to me. I just. Uh, I'm just like I said. I've never heard anything like this before. Crazy, right? yeah. especially in this day and age, yeah. right? Like it's, it's wild. Yeah, it yeah. Is. Ours, is, ours is not. Our, uh, they, it's it's just really funny because you, you guys. Uh, this is not the first time that I've heard this. Um, I thought this was how all strike went. All strikes went right. All battles with companies went, and I was learning very quickly. I was like, oh no, <laughs> we're we're in a really bad situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I uh, it, you know. Um, uh, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, you guys give me too much credit. I'm just stubborn. You know, that's really the reality of the situation. <laughs> hey, sometimes that's what it takes. Uh, sometimes I'm that's just exactly stubborn and, what it and, takes. You know, yeah. it's, it's funny because I, I understand, um, you know, the, the, the company not wanting to be told what to do because I hate being told what to do. Um, and so there's like some weird, small, very small, very small part of me that's like, okay, I get it. Um, you know, uh, but look, yeah, I'm I, I I'm on the verge of having to break down pretty much every week at this point, um, and so it is. It's not a pleasant experience, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. And I don't know that I, I like. I think I think I've talked to you guys before about it. I, you know, I have no idea if I'll ever go back to work. Yeah. Um, me personally, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I have a, a weird, I guess, in light of what what we talked about and like a little bit of the selfishness and 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 that kind of stuff. What what message would you want to get across to the other? Uh, medieval Thanks. times out members. there, the other members out there that maybe don't understand the fight that you're taking, but I look at it like, and, I, and believe it or not, you already have affected them in a positive way. So we, we discussed last time, um, so obviously you weren't here, but we discussed last time about how, you know, they, they gave raises right away when you guys went on strike. And why? Because yeah. they know they don't want everyone. Every other castle. Every yeah. other castle got raises, so. You know, that, that being said, in, in light of all that stuff, you know, what, what would be your message to the other, the other castles out there? Stop listening to what people are telling you on the inside. Uh, we, get, we get messages from, um, from members of, of different castles all the time anonymously um, where they're like, you have no idea the marketing campaign that's going on inside against you guys. Um, it, there's, there's, there's people in different locations that don't even know that their members are the ones that are scabbing. Um, because they they just keep all of that's hidden. It's like yeah, all yeah. top secret, all this kind of stuff. So, what I would tell people is um, um, be careful about listening to what your company is telling you because I'm t I, they're not telling you the truth. Um, and I'm they're not, not saying, looking out for you at the And end they're of not day. looking out for you, right? And, and even if they are telling you the truth, it's not the whole truth, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, be careful about listening to what your company says. And, and everybody understands this, I think, inherently, but they don't understand how it works in in practicality, which is that. You as an individual have no power at all. Uh, yeah. You just don't. Um, but with a group of people, you have a lot of power. Uh, and all, all it takes is for you guys to be on the same page to get what you want. Every single person at every other castle knows, whether they admit it or not, that there are problems and that the company is not good and they've seen their friends get fired for no reason. And they've seen their friends get injured and thrown away. So pay attention to the past, you know, look forward to the future and understand that you're not just fighting for yourselves. Um, and, and, you know, and also focus on the present and realize that if, if, if you are at any way upset 
with what's happening in your job, which you should be because it's not good, um, then what we're doing right now is the way to fight it. Uh, and you can do this exact same thing. And I swear to every single person out there, uh, that specifically that works in medieval times, um, but even beyond that, uh, that even, even if you scabbed, I swear to God, even if you scabbed, and if you call me and you need help organizing, I'll be the first person on a plane to be there. I'm going to give you shit about it for a day. <laughs> but, um, uh, As you should. Uh, but after that, um, I will be your biggest ally. Um, and, and that is... Um, that's just that's just what it has to do. I don't like the people that are scabbing. I, I'm having a hard time with them right now um, because they're hurting me. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like if I sat here and continued to be jaded because they're actively hurting me and then didn't help them, then we wouldn't get anywhere, right? Um, and so if I have to take the high road, I will take the high road. And I, like I said, I'll be the first person to be there. Um, well, I think like a lot of what we discussed earlier too plays into that is, is I'm sure there are some that are malicious about it, that are like, ah, yeah. fuck these guys. I don't really care what they, yeah. and I'm sure there are a lot that are uninformed, you know, yeah. that just don't understand what they're doing. They don't understand money, that. So. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, we're, we're getting close to the end here, so we'll, we'll start wrapping it up. But I, I just want to say, reiterate kind of what, what Sawa said, you, you're, you're a warrior, <laughs> you know, in, in all honesty, yeah. you're the, the embodiment of your portrayed uh, you know, job, right? You're, you're the embodiment of a knight. You're, you're like, hey, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to stick up for, for the little guy, um, you know, and, and you, you have a, a band of, of people following you, and it's great. Um, we will share your uh, GoFundMe. Hopefully we can get some, some more funds back in there. Yeah. Um, but just thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your story. I hope that, uh, you know, I, I hope it goes well. And Keep fighting the good fight, brother. We really appreciate you and, and, and look up to what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Seriously, this, this, uh, this means a lot uh, that you guys are paying attention. And um, uh, look, the, the final thing that I'll say is just uh, now's the time to help each other out. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're Teamsters. It doesn't matter if you're with us. It doesn't matter if you're Starbucks. Now's, now's the time. All right. Well, we like I said, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you guys out there in YouTube and Spotify world. Um, thank you for tuning in every week. We appreciate you. Please share, 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 um, share. like, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that stuff. Every Friday we, we put out an episode for you, and we're trying to be uh, a lot more active on the Instagram and on, on Reels and all that stuff. Yeah. So um, we just appreciate you. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully we see you next week. Hopefully see you next week. Uh, email us at ocst.000 at gmail.com. Put whatever you want in there. Stuff about uh, your your barn, strike lines. Even ask questions about medieval times. Maybe we can get you guys down there to go help them in their, their fight. Uh, also, Instagram at ocst.952. You know, we're going to be a little more active on there. I know we've been talking about having a live event, a uh, possible tattoo session up here. We'll keep you guys informed, but... Keep watching. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in again. See you guys next week.